of our next candidate is uh, David McKinley. David McKinley, I can assure you, will do something that, like, um, like has been mentioned, I can assure you, he will do something that his opponent has never pledged to do. He will never, ever vote for Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Because that one single vote for Nancy Pelosi is a vote against everything that West Virginians stand for. I'm proud to present to you. Thank you. Can you hear all right? All right. Let's uh, let me put this thing down on it. My name is David McKinley. And up in Wheeling, I'm a, I have a civil engineering and architectural practice in Wheeling. We work all over the state of West Virginia. Fourteen years ago, I thought I was out of politics. But I think I've felt a lot of what you have felt over the years was this growing anger, that resentment of what was going on in our country. And quite frankly, I admit sometimes it crossed over to my own party. I was the chairman of the Republican Party. 1994, and I was disappointed when I saw some things happen. And our party didn't stand up hard, didn't, wasn't the party of fiscal responsibility when we took over Congress. We lost a little of that. But I think they're understanding that. They've learned their lesson. They've learned that they're, our party, the Republicans, the conservatives, mean what they say now. And I think there's a growing opportunity here for us in this fall. But I tell you, it was a very challenging campaign to get through. And when I looked at it, I see Mac sitting over here. Mac was one of the toughest competitors I've ever run against in any race I've been involved in and any business involvement. Mac is a gentleman and a strong man and an American patriot. And let's all give him a round of applause. I've served with several of the people back here that have been in the legislature when I was there. I served from 80 to 94. Because I wanted to understand. I don't want government to run my life. But I want to understand what we can use the tools of government to help get out of the way of big business and small business. I have, mine's a small practice. We have 40 employees. But I want to make sure that nothing government does interferes with the growth of small business. So when I look over this crowd here today, I, I, see, I see people that, that have been represented on national television as being wild, crazy. I don't see that. I see just Americans. I see Americans that are, their children have had to leave the area to find a job someplace else. They've been unemployed at one time or another. They're underemployed. I understand that. My wife was 28 years in a hospital and lost her job. But she came back because that's the spirit that I want to see all across us is we all stand up to this. We've got to stand up to this government. What you are doing is powerful. And I'm so proud we've been able to smoke out our opponent because it's right now down to just two people. We had a whole bunch of people in this campaign, and you were you had to endure an awful lot of campaigning. But now it's down to two people. You got David McKinley, the conservative Republican, and you got Mike Oliverio, the lifelong Democrat, member of the Senate. Politician, been there forever. All he wants to do is change his seat from Charleston to Washington. But I was interested in one thing when he we had an, a chance that Dick Morris was in Wheeling. And Dick Morris asked him, he said, there's no such thing. You all know Dick Morris, you've all seen him on Fox. Oh, that's the only television network I watch is Fox News. <laughs> Dick, and Dick Morris said to him, Mac was there in the crowd, we both kind of smiled at because we know what was coming up. But he said, there's no such thing as a conservative Democrat in, in Washington. He said they all campaign, like Bob said, they all campaign, they're pro-gun, pro-family, pro-life. But when they go to Washington and have to endure the pressure that's there, I saw it in Charleston, but it's much worse when you talk to Shelley Moore Capito. What they do is they fold. 
And he said, there's no such thing as a conservative Democrat in Washington. He said, let me just point it out. He said, I've got my microphone here. And I met a young man in the crowd. His name's Mike Alvario. And he said, Mike, I'll give you the mic. You can address the 600 people that are here at the Chamber of Commerce Center. 600. All you have to do is come up here and tell me. You will not vote for Nancy Pelosi to be the speaker. Mike Oliveira looked like he was a deer caught in the headlights. <laughs> back, back and I looked at each other and we just laughed. He didn't know what to do because he knew he was going to vote for Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. So he stayed put. And then Dick Morris just closed by saying, there is the example. You had a chance. You got a chance again. This is a chance to change America back. I may be just one vote over there, but it's going to be a vote that we've seen in the last 28 years. There's always a vote for the Democrat majority, for the ideology or whatever was going on with that. That's not where I am. Some, some say I get crabby sometimes. Well, my wife even agrees. <laughs> but I'm crabby when it comes to details of how our country is being treated. Yeah. And when we have people out of work, so many out of work. That's wrong. We have lost our vision as a country. When I see Obama talking about, we're going to worry about whether our cars can get 45 miles to the gallon. Great idea. But Ed over here doesn't have a job. Ed doesn't care whether his car gets 45 miles a gallon. Ed deserves a job. I want to see our government get back to the fundamentals. And I'm angry about it because I've seen too many people. We have now in one county, Hancock County, 13.7% unemployed. And they're worried about whether our cars get 45 miles a gallon. Get at a job. Let's make sure it's not a government job. A little over 20 years ago, we had 150,000 manufacturing jobs in West Virginia. We now are down to 52,000 manufacturing jobs. If you put all the man so you can understand with that, if you put all the manufacturing jobs in one location, it wouldn't even fill Mountaineer Football Stadium. That's what's happened to our country. We've lost our vision. We've allowed government to get too large, too controlling, too intrusive. I want to bring it back. And I'm particularly proud to be here with you and this Tea Party, the Tea Party in Wheeling, the Tea Party in Parkersburg, North Central West Virginia. We're going to show that we, the party, includes all of us. And when I saw my opponent say he wants nothing to do with the Tea Party, then I understand he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand what it's going to take to get our country back again. So again, thank you very much. I hope you understand our passion.